This video tutorial is brought to you by TipSquirrel at www.tipsquirrel.com. For all kinds of Photoshop and Lightroom goodness, follow at TipSquirrel on Twitter or go to Facebook.com slash TipSquirrel. Hello everybody, Mike Hoffman here and we're continuing my series on learning 3D in Photoshop CS6 and today we're going to be talking about lights. We're working with a model here that I've imported as a 3D file into a 3D layer. And this model comes to us from TurboSquid.com, where I was able to download this for free. So here within my file, I've imported this model as a 3D layer. And when I did, it came in with an infinite light. Now within Photoshop, we have three basic types of lights, plus one special kind of light. And we'll get the special kind of light out of the way right at the beginning here. Notice the funny reflections. These are coming from the environment, and this is an image-based light. If we select environment in the 3D panel, we can go to the properties panel and we can see the image-based light. And in fact, we can click this icon and we can edit it. And we can see here that this is simply a black and white image and the white lights represent brightness areas. These are being cast onto this image and reflected. And we can turn that off by simply clicking here. We'll learn how to add some interesting image-based lights in the future, but for simplicity's sake today, we'll leave this off and we'll go back to the infinite light. Infinite lights are like the sun. They hit the entire model at the same time from the same direction. We can change the direction with the infinite light selected and the move tool active. We can go to the 3D options here and make sure that we're using the rotate to 3D object and we can simply drag this around and notice how the light is coming from different directions. But in the case of an infinite light, because it's like the sun, it has only a direction and an intensity. Now we can control the shadow. Notice the shadow here that's being cast and it's controlled by this option here in the properties panel. If we deselect this, the shadow goes away. We also have a slider here to control the softness of the shadow. All the way to the left, it's like harsh sunlight. When we take it to the right, it softens the shadow up quite a bit, and now it's more like a cloudy day. Now this will look more realistic once we do a rendering, but for the working view, this is pretty good. Now we're going to take this up and leave it a little bit harsher for now. Now we'll take this infinite light and we'll spin it around. I'm clicking and dragging, and we can put it actually behind the object and maybe bump up the brightness just a little bit. And now we've got a nice rim light coming in on the back of this model. Now if we were lighting this in the studio, that might be an interesting backlight. And now we would need a light on the left front to light up the front side of the model. And what we would typically use would be a spotlight. So we can click this icon and choose New Spotlight. Now a spotlight is different from an infinite light. A spotlight, you can think of it as like a flashlight or a stage light. It has a very directional nature and it has more or less a cone of light. You can see the shape of the cone here and the two circles represent the inside and the outside. So the inside is the hot spot and we can control the size of that. The outside represents the outer cone and we can control the size of that as well. Now the area in between the hot spot and the outer cone is the fall off area and that makes a nice gradient. So the bigger we make the cone and the smaller we make the hot spot, the more gradual of a fall off we're going to get. So we can really shape and sculpt the light the way that we want to here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this light and we're going to point it down on the subject. So we're going to need to switch tools here. We'll use this to drag it upwards and then we'll take this tool and we'll use that to push it backwards a little bit. And you can see we can actually push it right behind the model. But we'll bring it out here, maybe pull it up just a little bit higher again. And this may be a little tricky for you at first, but once you work with it, you'll get the hang of it. And you'll learn how to adjust these lights. Now what we've got here is a little bit of a shadow on the bridge of the nose, a little bit of light here on the cheek. And that's what I'm looking for. And maybe we'll want to adjust the cone angle a little bit more. And I can do that by simply dragging right here on the cone. 
we'll leave the hotspot as is here. So now we've got a nice dynamic light working on this model. But what we have here is a shininess that I don't really like. So we can get rid of that. And that shininess is coming from the texture on the head part of this 3D model itself. We can see here that the shine is 100%. We can back that shine down. And when we do, the texture gets a lot more diffuse. But at the same time, this light becomes a little hot. So let's go back to this spotlight and we'll back the light down just a little bit in its intensity. That looks pretty good. And we'll go to the infinite light and we'll back its intensity down a little bit as well. Now let's add a little bit of dynamic here. Let's warm it up. We'll click on the color swatch here for the infinite light and we'll select a warm color, sort of a light orange, and we'll click on OK. And now you can see we've got that coming in from the infinite light that's shining from behind the model. Let's go to the spotlight. We'll click on the color swatch here and we'll add the same color. Now we've got a much more warm light going on. We could even add an additional spotlight. If we wanted to, we could click here and choose new spotlight and maybe put one right here in the front. We'll drag it over to the side and we'll use this to illuminate the other side as a fill light. Now it's much too bright, so we'll need to turn the intensity down considerably here. And we'll just use this to provide some additional fill light on this side of the model's face. Now for consistency's sake, we probably want to match the color. So we'll do that as well. And now we've got a nice warm color on the model all the way around. So we've got an infinite light coming from the back and we've got spotlights coming from the front and it looks pretty good. The one thing that we're going to need to modify here is this shadow because with the infinite light I want to make the shadow be more soft. So we'll take it down like that. Now at this point we could do a quick render and we can do that by pressing Control Alt Shift R on the PC or Command Option Shift R on the Mac and letting this run. Now this could take a while and once the rendering starts working you'll get an indication here of the amount of time that it's going to take to do the rendering. In this case we're looking at just over five minutes. Now I can press the escape key to stop the render now. We've got an idea of what it's looking like. This shadow is looking pretty good. This one is still hard edged so we're going to want to go to this spotlight number one and maybe take the softness of this one down as well just to match the one from the front. So we've seen infinite lights and we've seen spotlights and the third type is a point light. Let's go ahead and add one just for fun. We'll click this icon again and choose new point light. It's added to the model right here and we can manipulate it. We'll click on it and then we'll use the arrows here to drag it around. And what we want to do is actually position this right inside of our model. We're going to have this light illuminate our model from the inside through the eyes. Now we may need to spin the model around a little bit to see it properly. And so what we'll do is we'll choose the current view and we'll save it. We'll call this front one just so we can get back to it. Then we'll spin this around a little bit so we can see what's going on with that light. There it is. Again, we want to drag this so that it's inside of the head. I think that's got it. So let's go ahead and select current view and we'll return to the view that we just saved. So there it is and now this light is inside of the head. What we'll do here is quickly select the textures for the corneas of the eye and we'll lower the opacity down. That will make the eyeballs transparent and now we can select that point light and we can give it a color. Let's make it an evil red color. 
so we can see what's going on. We'll click on OK and we can see the light is shining through the eyeballs and it's also casting a shadow down here on the shoulders. Now this will go away when we do a render. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll press again Control Alt Shift R on Windows or Command Option Shift R on the Mac and we'll do a quick render and see how this is looking. Again, we won't let this run all the way through. We'll escape out of that. We can see what's going on here. And now once again, we have in this scene several different kinds of lights. We have an infinite light representing a light similar to the sun shining from behind. We've got our spotlights illuminating the object and we've got a point light inside lighting up the model from the interior. So there you have it, the different types of lights and working with lights in Photoshop CS6. In future tutorials, we'll be adding lights to our models and using them to make the models more interesting and photorealistic. So there you have it, and I hope you'll try this for yourself and see how it works. Leave a note in the comments. I'd love to hear how you did, and if you have any requests for future tutorials in this series on learning 3D in Photoshop CS6. My name is Mike Hoffman. My website is hoffmanartdesign.com. You'll find a variety of photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom tutorials related information there. Or you can follow me at mhoffman2001 on Twitter, and you can find me on Google Plus by simply going to gplusmikehoffman.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial.